Hello and welcome to a video on differential equations. In this video, I'm going to talk about systems of differential equations, uh, two by two matrices, where the eigenvalues of the matrix are complex. So here we have uh, the equation x prime equal ax, where a is the matrix 1, 1, minus 4, 1. And what we'll do as usual for solving this is we'll find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we could start with finding the eigenvalues by calculating the determinant of a minus lambda i, but uh, for two by two matrices, this is really easy to write down without doing any work or much work. Uh, and that is we can write lambda squared minus the trace of a, which is two times lambda, and then add to that the determinant <clears throat> of a, which is one minus minus four is one plus four is five. And so we're, we can just use the quadratic formula on this and we get uh, that lambda is equal to plus or minus two, sorry, the lambda is equal to two plus or minus the square root of two squared or minus two squared, which is four, minus four times five times one, all divided by two. And then we can simplify that down to one plus or minus. Now under the square root sign, it's four minus 20, which is minus 16. So that gives us uh, four divided by two times i. And so we get one plus or minus two i as our eigenvalues. So I will call lambda one, one plus two i. And because we're dealing with a real matrix, we know that the eigenvalues always come in complex conjugate pairs. So lambda two is just the conjugate, which we see here, but more so, uh, we also get that the eigenvectors are, will be complex conjugates. And so let's just find the eigenvector for lambda equal one plus two i. And for that, we have to take a minus one plus two i times the identity matrix. And that will be equal to one minus one plus two i, and then a one and a minus four and a one minus one plus two i. So a little bit of cancellation and we get minus two i, one, minus four, minus two i. So it's sometimes a little harder to see um, that the fact that is always going to be true as long as we found the eigenvalue correctly that the a minus lambda i matrix should have rows that are scalar multiples of each other. And in the complex case, it, the rows will always be some complex multiple of one another. And in this case, you can see that we have a one here and a minus two i there. So that means that the first row or the second row is minus two i times the first row. And you can see that minus two i multiplied by minus two i, you get the minuses canceling, but you have an i squared, which gives you minus four. And that's what we see in the second row here. Okay, so uh, we can row reduce that matrix very easily because of that constant multiple between the rows. And so from this, we get that minus two i zero zero is an equivalent matrix. And now we could row reduce all the way, but instead I'm just gonna point out that whenever you have an equation or when you know once you've reduced it to a single equation like this you can rewrite it in terms of the x and y components or the first and second component of the eigenvector equal to zero what we can do is if we take the coefficient on the y to be our x and minus the coefficient of the x to be our y value then this will always come out to zero that is if you're taking um, if you have an equation like ax plus by equals zero, if you take xy to be b and minus a, then you can see that you'll get a zero out of that. And so, so we can just write down that our eigenvector v1 is equal to um, one, two i. And then we know that lambda two is one minus two i and the associated eigenvector is going to be v two, 
which will be the complex conjugate of that. So the conjugate of one is just one, and the conjugate of two i is minus two i. So now we have the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and so we can just write down a general solution. X of t is equal to c1 times x1, which will be e to the one plus two i times t, multiplied by the eigenvector one, two i, and remember that eigenvalue matches that eigenvector, don't mix them up, and then plus c2, e to the one minus two i times t, multiplied by that one, that eigenvalue's eigenvector. Okay, so we have an answer there, and this is, let's say we can call this x1 of t, and we can call this one x2 of t, And that's a solution. It's a general solution. Unfortunately, it's a complex valued one, and it will be hard to work with and unnecessarily complicated because we're generally going to be interested in real valued solutions. So how do we go from a complex valued solution to a real valued solution? Well, here, let's just, I'm going to, as an aside, some reminders about uh, first linear operators and then about complex numbers. So uh, the linear operator reminder is that if x1 of t and x2 of t are solutions to an equation, to equation, here, let's put a one here, and I'll refer to that back here, then um, C1 times X1 of T plus C2 times X, oops, X2 of T is also a solution. And, and we haven't really talked about this before, but this C1 and C2, these don't have to be real. These can be complex. Um, and so now we, okay, with that as a reminder, and now let's just look at what x1 is compared to x2. x1 of t is the product of two numbers, a complex number, functions of time. Uh, and so let's just give those simpler names. Let's say that this one is z, c1 times z times w, where this is the exponential and this is the vector. And then uh, x2 is, well, actually, I don't need the c in there, so let's just write that as x1 is z times w, and x2 of t is, well, this one, you'll notice, is z conjugate times w conjugate. Now, that e to the 1 plus 2i t uh, is a conjugate of e to the 1 minus 2i t is not, maybe not obvious, so let me write it out. This is e to the t cosine of 2t plus i sine t, uh, sorry, sine 2t, and e to the 1 minus 2i two, two times t will be equal to e to the t cosine, cosine of 2t minus i sine 2t. That's by Euler's formula. And you can see now that the only difference between these two expressions is that this one has a plus in front of the i sine t, and this has a minus. Now, that's the only i that appears in these expressions, so that means that we have that um, z and z conjugate are these pieces here and here. So, in, in other words, e to the i plus 2i, e to the 1 plus 2i all times t conjugated gives me e to the minus 2i times t. Okay, so um, so what does that do for us? Well, that means that x1 is actually the conjugate of x2. So x1 of t conjugate is equal to x2 of t. And so we are going to use that in a simple way. What, what do I mean by that? We're going to define y1 of t, a new vector solution, which is uh, 1 half times x1 of t plus 1 half times x2 of t. Now, if these are conjugates of each other, then what we're doing is we have 1 half times the real part 
times one half times the real part. And so that gives me the real part of x1 of t, which is the same as the real part of x2 of t. And then the imaginary parts just cancel because they have opposite sign. And then I'm going to define y2 of t to be equal to 1 over 2i times x1 of t plus 1 over 2i times x2 of t. And now if I, oh, sorry, not plus, I want the difference there. And so when I do that, the real parts cancel. And then the imaginary parts add to give me 2i times the imaginary part. And so if I divide through by the 2i, which I've done, I've got these coefficients 2i in front, then I get just the imaginary part of x1 of t. Likewise, the imaginary part of x2 of t, because um, those will be the same. Well, they'll differ by a, a minus sign, but that gets absorbed by a constant. So. Um, so these are now real solutions, and we can use these as two real solutions to form our general solution. So that means what we're really after now is the real and imaginary parts of x1 of t. Okay, so let me get rid of this note here, and we can try and fit all this on a single page. And I'll get rid of the linearity aside here. And so what we're really doing now is we just want to find e to the t. I'm going to write this guy out as it's cosine plus sine. Cosine 2t plus i sine 2t. We want to find the real and imaginary part of this product. So I take e to the t multiplied by, and now I'm going to get a cosine 2t plus i sine 2t in the first coordinate, and I'll get a 2i cosine 2t, and then when I multiply 2i by i sine t, I get minus 2 sine 2t. And now I can write that as two separate pieces. I'm going to write it as e to the t. And then I get a cosine of 2t. This is the part that has no i in it in the first vector, in the first component. And then I have a minus 2 sine t. That's the part that has no i in it here. And then I add to that i times e to the t times the parts that have the i's. So here I'm going to get sine of 2t and 2 times cosine of 2t. So these expressions, all three of these are the same, they're equal. But the nice thing about this expression is this is the real part of x1 of t, and this is the imaginary part, if I, I'm omitting that i part there. And so what that means then is I can take these without even bothering to look at x2, because we know it's just going to be the conjugate of this. So in other words, a minus sign over here. So y of t, the general solution that I'm after, is going to be equal to c1 e to the t cosine 2t and minus sine 2t plus c2 e to the t sine of 2t to cosine of 2t. So what I've done is I've taken the complex general solution here and said, you know what, I'm not interested in the complex ones, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this single solution here, write it out, figure out what its real and imaginary parts are, and then use the real part as one piece of my general solution here, and use the imaginary part as the other one, because of that aside that I made earlier, which demonstrated that um, that when I have a complex solution, its real part will also be a solution, and its complex part, or its imaginary part, will be a solution. And so that gives us the general solution y of t here.